All right, we have our working space. Notice just the layout. This is just like Photoshop's defaults. This is what's called essentials view in Photoshop, but this is PhotoP. We have the tools here. Depending on the tool we select, we have the tool settings at the top. We have layers here, very important for compositing. And then we have all of the major functions here, file, edit, image, layer, select, filter, etc. What I'm going to do is click onto my desktop. This is why we don't use the browser's full screen, because we're always going to be working from the desktop. So if you ever get into full screen with that, with that green circle, just hit escape or hover up at the top and hit it again and float it down so you can see your desktop in real time. I'm going to teach you all a shortcut that's really helpful through the semester. If you hold down your function key, it says Fn on it, and then you hit F11 while holding down the function key, this will happen. So at any time, no matter how many windows you have open and how many programs, you can see what's on your desktop, and you can organize things on your desktop, and then hit function F11 again to move things back. So. I can see the one I want to use. I'm going to drag and drop that in. I know I want this one. Strangely, <laughs> it went underneath my background. I'm not sure why that happened. Maybe because I didn't have any layer selected. I could move it on top of my background, but I don't want it to confuse you. So I'm just going to delete that and try it again. I have my background selected under layers. I'm going to drag and drop it in. This is what typically happens. It comes in on top of the last layer you had selected. When you bring something in from the outside, notice that it will have a little black square in the corner of the, the layer window thumbnail. That means it's what's called a smart object. A smart object means it's not permanent yet. This is simply like Canva, taking an image we have a source for and showing us a preview of that source within the program. That means we cannot delete pixels in this way. We have to do what's called rasterize it. But before we rasterize it, which means turn it into pixels within Photoshop that we own, that aren't linked to the original file anymore. Before we do that, we want to size it to the right size. So you always want to make sure you have enough pixels. I know that this is enough pixels. So now I use this transform box and I can drag it from the corner. And if I hit nothing else while I do that, it will just scale it up without losing any, uh, it won't distort it at all. If I hold down shift and do that, it can distort it. Also, if I click outside of the transform box, I can rotate it. And because we don't want this to have any particular orientation, right? Like up, down, side to side, that's ideal. I'm not thinking of gravity as being one of the reasons for this. So I can scale it, I can warp it, or, or distort it rather. And then if I do a right click within the transform box, I get a bunch of other options. My favorite is one called warp, which we'll be using a lot in these first two exercises, where it cuts any rectangle into a nine square grid, like it's chicken wire. And anywhere on that grid, you can push and pull and kind of bend that chicken frame to make it into a different shape. Like if the cartoon were printed on Silly Putty and you wanted to stretch it in different areas. All of this is a preview of what you're doing to those pixels. In order to place it, and you can't do anything else in PhotoP really until you do this except zoom in and out, is you have to hit return. So whenever you see this blue transform box, whether you're warping or not, you have to hit return to place it. And that makes that decision known. Notice though, it still has that black box in the corner. So the next thing I wanna do is I wanna use the lasso and I wanna start deleting from this image. Like I don't want the eyes. Maybe I want the nose, but not the eyes. And this doesn't need to be super clean. So I'm just going to do a big lasso around the eyes. And my intention is to delete it. So I just lassoed it. I closed the loop with the lasso. You can see the selection. So if I hit delete, it should delete it, but it's not going to. 
Instead, it's going to give me this warning. It will show it again. The smart object must be rasterized first. Right? So in order to do that, I have to right click on the layer. And I have to scroll down to rasterize. This is exactly the same in Photoshop. Click that. Once I've done that, that little black square will disappear. Those pixels are locked in and saved in Photoshop. And that allows me to delete them. And to edit the image in any way I want. Add color. Do anything else. Is there anything else I want to delete from this one? I don't love the, the white sports socks. But I like the random shoe. So I'm going to lasso that. And I'm just going to hit delete. So that's step one. Remember, this is all free floating on its own layer. Problem is, I have white pixels and black pixels. And probably a handful of gray pixels in there. But don't worry about that yet. Now let's bring in the next one. But before I do this, I want to make sure that this is saving. right? So I already named the file when I created it. If I go to File, I can say Save as PSD. That's what we've been doing. That's a shortcut. But if you go to Save More, this is what I'm actually going to encourage you to do. I've been playing with this since last class. If you say PS, uh, Save PSD to Storage, this will give you options to save it to any cloud accounts you have, like a Dropbox, something like that. If you do, but I want you to be able to save it to your computer. So if you do save more and then save PSD slash PSB, then it gives you a clearer window where you can see what the name is that you're saving it as. And then when you click, you'll see that it's saving it as that name as a PSD to your computer. It's going to save to your downloads folder. And so once it's saved, I want you to take it from your downloads folder and put it onto your desktop. Are you within PhotoP or? Okay, so you guys are using mice. I'm using a trackpad. A trackpad allows you with two fingers to do this. To do that without a trackpad, hold down your spacebar, and then you can move around. That's what's called the hand tool. Especially when you're zoomed in, that's really helpful. Thanks for mentioning that, because sometimes I forget that you guys are, are locked with mice. Yeah. How can I do that? Okay. So you want to place something over a black and you want it to be inverted. Yeah. So let me show you how. This is going to get a little bit further into what we're going to do, but I'll just show it really quick with this next layer. Okay. So I'm going to take this one. I'm going to drag and drop it in. It's got black and white, right? The problem is if I just invert it, I'm going to end up with a whole lot of other blacks that I don't want. So instead, what you want is the black here to be white, right? But the white to be gone. So <laughs> this is what you do. You have to rasterize it first because that has to do with changing pixels. So I rasterize it. Then what I do is I select, not with the lasso tool, which I just used to delete, but I select with the tool underneath it, the magic wand. And the tools are basically stacked in terms of how often you need them. <laughs> so selection tools are first. The magic wand allows you to select whatever pixel you, you pick and then whatever pixels are similar to it within a certain tolerance. The default tolerance, we're going to keep these defaults, is 32. And then what I want you to, to uncheck for this project is contiguous because we wanted to select all the white in the image, not just the whites that are touching. So if we have contiguous unchecked and then I click on the white in this layer with the magic wand after it's been rasterized, it will select all the whites. Then when I hit delete, there are no more whites. Then you can see that the selection is still active. I need to deselect so I can select the other stuff, right? So I'm going to hit deselect. Um, one way to deselect is just click the lasso and click off of it. I hit Command Z so it went a step back. The way I prefer to deselect, because sometimes you don't even see what's selected, but you want to make sure nothing's selected, is you just hit Command D. And that will deselect. Okay, next, 
I now have black shape on top of a black shape. I want it to be a white shape on top of a black shape. To do this, you go to image, adjustments, invert. And that will swap the histogram. So if it was black, it will be white. If it was white, it will be black. But there's actually a better way to do this. Once you know how it works, this was off the side. So this is one of the problems of inverting and selecting and deleting. So let me show you another way that I could have done this. I'm going to do Command Z, go back in my history. So I've cut this out. This is basically a cookie cutter now. I can also select with the magic wand the empty space now in this layer. I'll turn off the other layer so you know what I'm talking about. I can select all the empty space everywhere because contiguous is turned off. Now I'm going to say select inverse. So it's only selecting the space within the head. And then I can turn off that layer, turn on the white background, so you can see that selections, this is the beauty of these raster programs, selections are not tied to a layer. Selections can move between layers. So to do that same thing, I can simply use that and delete it from this layer. Does that make sense? And that's a lot conceptually cleaner than putting white pixels on top of black pixels only to put on a white page again. So we're going to learn how to do all that. So I'm going to back up and instead just bring this in before I rasterized it. Okay. So let's bring this element in. <laughs> and the problem is, why might you want to turn it into white lines and put it on top? Because if I make this as big as I want it and I rotate it, there's a lot of white space in this image and it's covering up what I had before, right? And we want only the black pixels. And I can warp it. I can right click inside. I can push and pull it. Kind of like that. I can use my arrow keys to move it. I can just click inside it and move it. I can hit return and place it. When we do a lot, Photo P can slow down a little bit, which is annoying. I got to get onto the move tool and then move it. But here's the main thing. This is where we talked about being introduced to blending modes. How do I make it so I can see the layers underneath? So I haven't even rasterized this yet, but you see above it, it says normal. Normal means that it's showing all pixels at 100% opacity. If I use that drop down menu, and we're going to learn more of these later, but if I just go to multiply, Multiply is going to make it from what looks like just a black and white printout to what looks like a schoolyard, not schoolyard, school classroom overhead projection film, right? Where only darker things are allowed to come through. The white pixels are still there, we're just not seeing them. But that can allow me to transform, ah, not transform that way. This can allow me to edit it. Now, now that I've done that, maybe I want to move that head more. But because I haven't brought it in anymore, I've lost the transform box. So very important, how do I get that transform box back? One way is to go to edit and go to free transform. That will give me the transform box back. Another way, a shortcut that we'll use all the time, which is slightly different in Photo P than in Photoshop, is it's control T. In Photoshop, it's command T. But if you do Command-T in a browser, it opens a new tab. So it has to be Control-T. Control-T will give me that transform box. And then I can do all the stuff I was doing before. I can hold down Shift. I can warp it. I can rotate it. I can, I can even flip it on its axis, right? So if I right-click and I say flip horizontally, then it will flip it horizontally, which is kind of cool. That works well. But then you have to hit return to, to lock it in and wait till that transform box goes away. Okay, so now I have two layers. One is on multiply mode so that I can see the layers underneath it. If I want to delete from it, and I do, I need to first rasterize it. And then I can use my lasso tool 
And then I can start deleting. Like maybe I don't want this nose. 